This is a brief introduction to the oscilloscope. So even though in this class and the full remote, we're not gonna actually use an instrument like this. So you're gonna make your own oscilloscope using the Arduino and some software that we provided. So Professor Mike Economo wrote a really neat MATLAB program that basically gives you an oscilloscope GUI in MATLAB. It's pretty cool, we'll roll that out next week. So, but for now, I'm just gonna introduce some of the important points about an oscilloscope. So when we're looking at the screen, so now you know time is on the horizontal axis, and we usually have a voltage on the vertical axis that could be a you know, representation of other things. And then there are two inputs on the scope, a channel one, which is in yellow right there, and a channel two, which I could turn on. And that's the green trace. Right now, nothing's connected to it. Turn it back off. And the line right here, or that little number one is, is called the baseline indicator. So the baseline indicator tells us where the zero is or the reference for the oscilloscope. And you can see it has a little ground symbol there. It's a little difficult to see, but that says that's the zero. You know, so if I stop talking, flat line, no signal right there. And the other important adjustments on the oscilloscope are the time divisions. Like you can see we're on five milliseconds per division. So each one of these boxes is five milliseconds. And I adjust that depending on what I want to look at. So you can see now, you know, the signal looks pretty good. We're seeing a few different cycles. If I go, ah, uh, you know, we could see a bunch of those cycles on there. And that's because we're using an appropriate time scale. And you could, the time scale could be way out of whack. We'll show you that in a second. So the other thing you might notice is the signal is reasonably sized, but it's not taking up a ton of the screen, especially if you're watching this video on a small screen you might say that's a little small. So there's a vertical setting over here where you could change the amplitude representation on the screen. And now you can see the signal is bigger looking. You know, it's not actually a bigger signal, but you know, we're zooming in on that. And if you noticed as I was turning the knob, the number up here changed it. It's on 20 millivolts per division right now per box. Now it's on 50, now it's on 100. So the bigger the number is, you know, the more range there is on here. So the smaller the signal is gonna look. So obviously, if I was trying to see what was going on in the signal, being on one volt per division might be a bad setting because I could barely see anything. You know, then the same point, you know, if I had on one millivolt, that's also just jumble too. So you need to know what your signal range is, or if you don't, you do a little bit of scouting and you make some measurements and then you adjust things until you get it just right. And so here, you know, just right might be 20 millivolts per division. So same thing as at the horizontal scale, the time scale, you know, we're at 10 milliseconds and you know, it's a voice signal. It's in the hundreds of Hertz to single kilohertz. If we had the time base set on say one second per division. So first thing is it's going to take 10 seconds for the screen to refresh. And this is a decent signal. This is telling me kind of where the energy is in the signal, but it's not telling me the nuances, you know, like what the different frequencies are, you know, then at the other Point if I go, you know, much smaller, if I go down to nanoseconds or microseconds, right now we're at one microsecond, like we can't really make anything out of that at all. I mean, we could tell there's some activity on there, but it's not visible. And you know, one microsecond corresponds to signals in the megahertz. And I don't believe my voice goes that high. And if it did, I couldn't hear it. So it's important, you know, when you're making measurements to think of time scale. You know, if we were trying to measure like particle detection from uh, you know, from some kind of nuclear particles hitting a detector, you know, maybe a, a low speed wouldn't be appropriate because those things come in and they have very little energy. So we'd be looking for high frequency pulses, you know, but then on the other end, if we were looking for say like seismic activity or, you know, changes in blood pressure over time or as a you know a subject or patient was standing up or sitting down, we'd probably want to be in the seconds range. So you have to think about what you're trying to measure and what you're expecting and then you could adjust your instrument accordingly.